Well, good day, YouTubers. And uh, what an incredibly hot day. Hope you're uh, managing okay. We're now, what, at the end of, coming up to the end of the fourth week. And um, yeah, it'll soon be five weeks of lockdown with no official mention at the moment of when and how things might uh, come to an end um, except in Scotland and Wales um, they've actually begin or begun to offer a few morsels of what could possibly happen how how we can actually slowly get out of this situation um, as I say no mention from the English uh, Parliament government um, but then you wouldn't expect Otherwise, because uh, it just wouldn't be British, would it? Anyway, um, before I get going with the uh, the pudding, um, I'm in I'm in Garstang Marina, but um, I don't use the postal address. Um, but there's a couple of viewers who uh, have used their initiative, uh, Kevin and Carol. They have a YouTube channel called The Frustrated Boater, and <laughs> There was a knock on my boat a couple of days ago and a, a gentleman in the uh, marina had taken a look in the uh, post box that's here and found this envelope addressed to me and it's addressed to Kevin Shelley aka Country House Gent and Aslan um, either Garstang Marina or Bridge House Marina Nateby Crossing Lane Garstang and uh, in it is this spatula which is so timely it's unbelievable because i'm going to be making a pudding this is going to be ideal for oh i'm going to be mixing and scraping and god knows what but they had a letter with it put a letter with it it was actually sent on the 10th of april but it's now the what are we now I've completely forgotten. Was it the twenty third? Is it? Um, and I've a couple, I only just got it a couple of days ago. And it says, "Hope this finds you somewhere in Garstang." Uh, Hi, Kev. Being avid fans of travels by narrowboat and your cooking slots, we thought this utensil would come in handy so you can scrape every last morsel of food from your pots and pans. Knowing how much you love your food and hate seeing any waste, uh, to me, it's a cook's best friend. Uh, look forward to more travels by narrowboat and travels by motorbike. Oh, and cooking. Take care, friend, and stay safe. Kevin and Carol, frustrated boater, YouTube. Well, I never. Yeah, Kevin and Carol, they're um, they're regular, uh, regularly post comments on uh, Facebook uh, and and on YouTube channel here. So that's just brilliant. Thank you very much. So I'm going to be putting that to good use right now. Yep, so back in season six, episode two, I made a naughty pudding, bread and butter pudding. It was crispy and gooey and sweet and crunchy and smothered it in cream. And oh, it was just, it was an experience. So I'm going to repeat the uh, that same sort of theme again with a quite literally a naughty pudding and it's a British favorite which has gone through a fairly recent name change um, but its traditional name is Spotted Dick yep yeah, Spotted Dick is extremely quick to prepare but takes about an hour and a half to steam. And for this, we'll be having about 125 grams of good old suet. You could use vegetable suet, but I'm going all traditional with shredded beef suet. 250 grams of uh, flour. You can use either plain or self-raising. Um, I, I have a bit left over here of a mixture of self-raising and plain so I'm gonna I'm gonna mix the two I'll use up all the self raising and make up the difference with plain 
180 grams of currants and then we want the uh, zest grated zest of a small orange and a lemon uh, now if you uh, saw my post on uh, here on YouTube and on Twitter yesterday you'll know I had a bit of a problem finding a lemon but I popped out today on the off chance that um, they've got some in and I found some lemons also I thought I'd be a bit daring um, I never really use a scales because I thought I didn't have one but then I remembered I had these scales under the front uh, well deck there which I used to use in my eBay days when I was selling things on eBay um, yeah good simple electronic scales so that'll be exciting won't it I'll well, get started then before I do anything else I'm going to put the steamer on to boil right. well, I have some fairly warm water in there and over the hour and a half while this is steaming I'm going to keep checking and topping up the actual steamer because we don't want it boiling dry do we light the hob with a, another viewer's gift the extended lighter awesome bit of kit we'll get that over the gas put the uh, lid on and we'll just let that boil away firstly then take the scales has an auto zero function so I put the bowl on first and then turn it on and it will be zero and we want to start with the flour a bit of self-raising first we want 250 grams so we'll bung all that in and that's going to be that's 128 and then we'll take the plain flour and make up the difference and we want 250 200 225 getting there 253 that'll do right, and I'll add that into I'm using my Pyrex bowl here like so let's put that over there out of the way no we won't Ooh, it's a juggling act here then we need to add a pinch of salt um, as you know I don't always use salt but uh, I have this low salt for emergencies so I'll add a bit of that a pinch which is going to be let's say something like that maybe a bit more I mean why you'd have salt in something that's sweet I don't know but there we go salt in there like that Put that to one side. Get our scales again. Bowl back on. And now we want 125 grams of shredded suet. straight in there 125 grams which will be about a quarter of the pack I should have estimated it and then poured it and then we'll see if my estimations are correct but uh, no 128 there we go 128 grams of suet put that over there and we'll add that into the bowl This is a juggling act. Scales back on again. Now for the currants. 180 grams. Ooh, the currants. I believe the steamer is already coming up to the boil. 
So I'm going to turn that down for a second. Yeah. We'll keep that turned down. 180 grams of currants. Seventy, one hundred eighty one. Now I'll put that straight in there as well. Next up, Phew. eighty grams of caster sugar. It is a whole lot easier with the scales, I must admit. There we go. 80 grams. And that goes in the bowl. And that's all the scales work done. Like so. Let's give that a quick uh, stir with the new stirrer. Thank you, Kevin and Carol. Yeah, it has a curved corner, so you can get right into the corners there as well, if you have a curved bowl, that is. Very nice. Yeah, Spotted Dick, it was uh, first mention of it back in the 1700s, and they believe the name rather comically came about, because traditionally it's, uh, it's mixed up into a dough and then rolled out into a 6 to 8 inch length round. Yeah, I bet that was... Uh, first one to mention that had a good old giggle I bet but uh, quite recently uh, a council in the UK I can't remember the name uh, their catering department uh, was having to endure uh, many jokes from uh, customers turning up to have a bit of spotted dick so they changed it to Spotted Richard, which is, um, I think, a bit PC gone a bit mad, I think. And I believe there's a supermarket in Britain that sells their own Spotted Richard. Honestly. Right. Well, that's that bit mixed up. Now we need... take a grater and we need to grate the zest and the rind of an orange and a lemon. Well that's that zested. Now the lemon. Let's get that on there. Yeah I'm really hoping in the next sort of three weeks or so, by the time we have the next evaluation, there will be something, some sort of easement. Right, that's all the orange and lemons grated up. That can go straight in there, like so. Right, let's give that another mix up then. Then into a jug, we want to add 150 mils, milliliters, or around about a quarter of a pint of millet. I'm going to make a little well in the middle and then pour that straight into that. There we go. 
may have to add a little bit more uh, once we get an idea of the uh, general texture and let's mix that up we want to end up with a firm sort of moist dough I'm quite proud of myself actually because um, I had sort of thought well I'm going to turn this into an innuendo fest sort of going about we want to end up with a moist dick and all that kind of stuff but uh, no I'm going to uh, to be honest I'm not in the mood <laughs> I imagine, like a lot of you, we're getting extremely fed up now. All right, well, we're ready, really, to uh, get cooking it. I'm going to take some foil. Like that. And then we're going to, I'll get a, uh, get a big spoon. I'm going to take the uh, the mix. Ooh, that's very stiff. And I'm going to make more of a sort of a round sponge spotted dick. going to sort of shape it like so yeah and then we'll fold it up not to burn my hand on the edge of the steam and burn my arm. I'm going to go into a little little packet like that. All right, just check the water. Yep, plenty of water. I'll turn it up a little bit. Get it boiling away nicely. Lid off and the packet goes in there and lid on. And that is going to steam away for an hour and 30 minutes. Remembering every 15, 20 minutes or so just to check the, uh, the water and top it up if necessary because you don't want the pan boiling dry. Seeing as it's such a gorgeous day at the marina and uh, I'm waiting for my pudding to uh, steam away It's time to enjoy another beer, I think. Ooh, never had one of these before. This is Lancaster Black, a dark velvet plush stout. Mm. Mm -hmm. Appearance is dark rosewood black. The aroma is smoky malt with a hint of coffee and chocolate. Why is it lots of beers have a hint of chocolate, but they don't have chocolate in them? And the flavour is full-bodied roasted malt leading into the spicy fresh hops. Uh, on a scale of five, it has, I, th I assume they're lemons, it has a three and a half on the bitterness scale. And the sweetness is two and a half out of five. Hmm. Right. So yeah, this is another dark stout. Lancaster Black. I, I do like dark stouts. Dark real ales. A few of you commented on my um, sort of beer pouring skills and uh, how I ended up with a very good head. I'd, 
I'd like to say it's practice, but it's not. Oh, the smell. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is, a, this is also a dark one. Can I, like the Guinness Porter, I can't see through that. That's, that's the stout darkness test. If you can see any light through it, then it's just not good enough. Right. Mmm, hoppy. Mmm. Oh. I would say it's slightly more bitter than the Guinness Porter. Mmm. Lancaster Black, eh? most agreeable well that has another how long does it have it has another hour and 20 minutes to go on the pudding at least so I'm going to enjoy this but I'm going to try and restrict myself to one because I, I bought uh, I bought three of these but um, yeah, I'm going to try and restrict myself to one. So when I see you in an hour and 20 minutes, um, it should be me. Well, while the spotted dick's steaming, this is the entrance to the marina and I haven't really Sort of spent much time at this part right by here. But it's quite beautiful. Right next to the canal. It's a sunspot. Right. Just uh, a little under an hour to go. And I'm just going to top up the old water like so well about 10 minutes to go then and uh, well seeing as it's such a nice day I'll have another beer this time it's uh, Hawkshead Brodie's Prime Porter A 4.9% dark, rich, complex beer. A modern dark beer with a surprisingly hoppy finish from American Cascade Hops. Mm. Hawk's Head Porter. Oh, Hawk's Head, of course. Beer from the lakes. Hawk's Head in the Lake District. Oh, a bit slow today. Let's try this out then. Yeah, not as dark as the stout, but still nice and dark. Mind you saying that, I wonder how it fares in the light test. I oh, know I can now. Uh, I can make out a kind of dark ruby colour. Okay, so the Hawk's Head Porter. Oh, delicious. That's very similar to the Guinness Porter. Not as dry and bitter as the uh, previous one, the Stout. Whatever that was called. Was it Lancashire Black, something like that? Lancaster Black? Anyway. Mmm. Oh, there is a reason I like dark real ales. That's very, that's very fruity. It has a Oh, it's almost like a sort of dark cherry kind of flavour. Mm. None of the hint of coffee with the Guinness Porter. It's, uh, mm. Incredibly fruitier. 
well not long now three minutes 30 seconds so we're pretty much there I think but um, I will wait the full hour and 30 minutes mm. Forty seconds to go. Well, I think that's pretty much going to be it, isn't it? Right, I'm not going to turn the gas off. I'm just going to put it on low because I don't want the water to cool down too much in case it needs a bit more cooking. Et voila! Let's get the parcel out. Mm. Let's try this out then. Oh, please be cooked. Oh, wow. Hello. Oh, my word. That is one hell of a sponge. Oh, it's so moist. Let's just get the knife in there and see what's what shall we I think well we are we're there I can smell a lot of orange and lemon zest oh, well I have my bowl and spoon ready right all I need now is to um, dish it up with something what have we got in here I shall. Oh, it's a shame to cut into it, but I'll take a slice. Look at that. That is a proper, proper sponge. Keep my thumb on it that way. There we go. Oh, look at that. It's so moist and springy. Oh, wow. I'll put that in there. There we go. And because I couldn't get any custard powder, and to be honest, I really couldn't be bothered making my own custard. I mean, who wants to get vanilla pods and sugar and egg? and mess about making your own custard when you can just put some Longley Farm fresh single cream on there instead. Oh, wow. And we'll just pour a good bit of that on there. Oh, well. Mm. Oh, my word. It's so fruity. It's not dry in the slightest. Wow, it's so much. I mean, I always go on about sponges. I mean, I've had not ones I've made, but I've had some quite terrible sponges in the past. Just dry and you like. But now this, this is so moist. I don't think, well, I'm not going to say anything about it. I don't think I've had a dick quite like it, but uh, no. I don't think I've ever had a spotted dick quite like it. No, I don't think I'm going to say anything about not having a spotted dick quite like it. And again, yeah, I have never had a spotted dick quite like it. It's not stodgy. It falls apart. It's weird, it holds its shape. But it falls apart when you eat it. But it's moist. <coughs> oh. You also have to watch it doesn't go down the uh, down the wrong hole. Oh. <coughs> yeah, well that would have been good, wouldn't it? Man makes the most perfect spotted dick and then chokes on it. Well, there you are. Absolutely incredible. And uh, I shall leave you to uh, all come up with as many 
spotted dick innuendos as you can in the comments below. <laughs> mm. Right, that'll do me. And uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Cheers for now. This is quite incredible. I'm not just saying it, you know. It is.